Most of the time, flashover is going to occur on an unvented structure. If we pull up on scene at 2 a.m. in the morning and we have some wispy smoke showing from the eaves, that's not a vented structure. And all our job is to do is to deal with that fire triangle. At that moment, that fire triangle is not complete until we show up on scene. And when we show up on scene and kick in that door, what happens? We allow that air to go in, feed that seed of the fire oxygen, it re-energizes itself, and guess what? We just completed that fire triangle. Now our job becomes we have to break up one leg of that fire triangle. So if you ventilate horizontally, you can actually accelerate a fire, and that goes for vertical ventilation too. If you do not coordinate an attack on the seat of the fire and you vertically ventilate a building, you can actually accelerate flashover into that structure. We have to have a coordinated effort. Um, the engine company makes entrance, the truck company vertically ventilates or horizontally ventilates in the right location. Uh, we allow the gases to uh, vent and we allow the environment to clear up and we can attack the seat of the fire a little bit more rapidly. The problem for us, if it's done in an uncoordinated process, if the hole's cut too soon, if the glass is broken too soon, then we actually accelerate the velocity of flame and we actually engage in a much bigger firefight than we had planned on. Horizontally, if you open doors, windows randomly, you're going to accelerate the growth of that fire if you do not have a hose line in place. Vertically, same thing. If you randomly vertically ventilate a building, you're going to accelerate the fire if you don't have water in place on that seat of the fire. But flashover recognition can start uh, before you even get in your car to go to work in the morning. What type of day do you have? Is it raining? Is it windy? Which direction is the wind coming from? Because all that can have an effect on the way a structure can burn. We have these environmental issues that we have to deal with on scene. And if we open a door and we have a, the, a serious wind at our backs, we're going to pressurize that structure. Based upon is the wind at your back, is the wind at your face, you might want to select a different entry portal just because opening that door will super accelerate the growth of that fire if it's wind driven and the power behind it. Generally in the fire service we like to go from the uninvolved portion of the structure to the involved portion of the structure. So if it was in a rear bedroom we'd want to make exit through the front door, therefore not pushing or accelerating the fire through the rest of the structure. That's not to say though if the fire is is really coming out of that back bedroom window, we could perhaps soften the structure, or soften the target by directing the straight stream through that window to the ceiling level and at least cooling those gases down, knocking the fire down shortly and then making our attack from the inside. Hitting it hard from the yard, softening the target. This has been around for several years. It's just now um, kind of getting uh, refocused uh, right now. If you recognize a certain situation and you know that you have this fire blowing out of a window or blowing out of an opening, go ahead and soften that room. It's okay with that straight stream and a straight stream only, and then make your entrance. Now there are some steps a firefighter can take to delay flashover, and that's using your nozzle as a tool. And that is to direct that straight stream up to the ceiling level where it's gonna be the most effective, and then rotate it throughout the room so that you don't cool that same spot several times in a row. Not just standing there waiting to get to the seat of the fire, but cooling the gases down appropriately and lowering their ignition temperature so that you could probably reach that seat of the fire or effect a rescue or possibly escape the structure. That smoke right there, that high velocity, high temperature smoke, travels at about 15 miles an hour. As you get in and if you have to retreat, you can't crawl faster than 15 miles an hour. And that fire is going to find you before you find it. The NFPA says a firefighter can travel 2.5 feet a second without a hose line and has two seconds to escape if flashover occurs. That translates if you're more than five feet from an exit, you're not going to make it out. Your hose line is going to be your best protection either going into that building and coming out of that building. So do not leave that hose line behind. We've had uh, firefighters that um, were told to uh, retreat and back out of the structure and leave their nozzle. They had no water when they retreated and they were caught in a flashover and unfortunately perished or seriously injured. And so having that water is our safety net. Having that water to be able to cool that environment, that's what we need. That is so important for us. It comes to risk versus gain. Again, if we're attempting a rescue, we're trying to save either one of our own firefighters or perhaps a, a civilian that's reported to be down, 
we want to take those steps to affect that rescue. And if we have to cool those gases down, we're going to use our nozzle as a tool, drop that ignition temperature, and again, get that rescue affected, risk versus gain. Mm -hmm.